Hi, this is Ike Ahmed from the University of Toronto. I practice in the Toronto area. My practice is primarily cataract, intraocular lens, glaucoma, and anterior segment repair. You know, when it comes to modern day IOL calculations, it's pretty apparent to me that both optical biometry and keratometry is critical. And in fact, for most of our patients, we use topography routinely. And you know, it's not just about IOL calculations, it's also about as assessing the corneal shape, it's about assessing for other corneal abnormalities, and certainly is an essential tool for toric IOLs. This usually requires multiple measurements over multiple machines. Uh, the ability to combine, of course, the topography with an optical biometry or keratometer is of immense value as far as workflow and having everything all in one platform, having a printout that can give you all information about the cornea, about the corneal aberrations, about corneal topography, and of course the essential optical axial length as well. So we find the form factor and the workflow with this device to be essential and very helpful in a busy cataract practice. You know, we use uh, coronal topography and along with that uh, pupillometry, you know, routinely in premium IOLs. And there are many reasons why. Obviously measuring the corner is important to look for any irregularities. Uh, look for form for us keratoconus, uh, look for irregular cylinder, look for any abnormal uh, you know, corneal maps. This may give us an indication this patient may not be a great candidate, for example, uh, for uh, presbyopic lens, or in fact will give us a, a reason to talk to the patient about perhaps expectations may not be uh, exactly 2020 for some patients. We of course use it essentially for toric lenses, very important for looking at the axis of cylinder uh, for correction. Uh, and then pupillometry also is becoming more important for a few reasons. One of the reasons is, of course, looking at the concern as far as aberrations. Patients who have larger pupils, which pay more attention to spherical aberration, which we, of course, measure on topography as well. Uh, looking at uh, certain multifocal lenses, important to assess maybe a patient's risk or a patient's performance based on the way that the multifocality is developed as well. And thinking about visual access as well, thinking about visual access and centration of lenses, angle kappa and the sword are all important variables in terms of looking at the pupil, looking at the visual axis, looking at the cornea as well. So I like to get a real complete picture of the anterior segment and the visual axis. Uh, you know, unfortunately with uh, keratometry alone, th that doesn't give us enough information. Uh, and the entire picture, including coronal topography, is really, I think, the ultimate in terms of IOL selection and, and patient selection for that matter. One of the most uh, annoying things that I do routinely and our staff do routinely is entering uh, measurements manually on the website, calculator, or another software. Uh, errors happen, you know, workflow issues occur. So we love, of course, when calculators and formula are built on the platform. I mean, this makes life so much easier, reduces errors, and gives us, again, one-stop measurements and one-stop calculations and one-stop printouts. Uh, so I can't tell you how valuable that is. Uh, there's obviously a lot of reasons why having one platform to do everything is helpful. But that alone is a feature for me that I think is very, very useful in terms of uh, all the reasons we talked about. You know, it's pretty evident that uh, we're in the era of new modern generation IOL, Iowa formula. Uh, we've come a long way from the two variable formulas and I think uh, multivariable formulas are where I see things are currently. Uh, my preferred formula at this point in time is the Barrett, like many, like many people out there. Even, you know, not even for toric lenses, but you know, just for routine IOL calculations of all sizes. Uh, there's no axial lift, axial lift adjustment needed for long eyes. It's effective in shorter eyes as well. So we find a broadest range of application with the Barrett. Uh, the Barrett toric calculator, I think, has become the predominant calculator for toric IOLs because, of course, the compensation for posterior cornea and the adjustment of ELP in the toric calculation. So having the Barrett on, on the platform again and, have, and it being our favorite formula to use again is another value. It's something we do even on other platforms when we don't have the Barrett, we actually manually enter uh, numbers into the Barrett formula to get that uh, calculation. Well, you know, I think, uh, you know, this, the, as far as the Aladdin is concerned, uh, we look at it from different perspectives. From a surgeon perspective, getting as, as much data as we can, uh, again, not just on the axial length, but on the cornea. You know, we've moved from the importance of axial length, which we know is important, but these optical biometers are very good. We've had a lot of experience with the Aladdin. We find the Aladdin measurements to be very consistent, for example, with side-by-side -side comparison to the Isle of Master as well. But the shift has been more toward the cornea. It's been looking at accurate keratometry, 
looking at coronal topography as we've mentioned earlier. So that's really I think where a lot of the action is as far as the variables are concerned and some of the errors that can happen. The ability to, again to have everything on one platform, a one-stop shop, point and click basically for our technicians as well is again a very attractive workflow solution. Uh, I see again we continue to work on combining features from different platforms onto one platform with different technologies and, you know, including of course the Aladdin. And it's an attractive thing for a practice to have again a very form function unit like this that can allow us to do I think the ultimate and IOL calculations with the latest software and uh, everything done very automated. So it's, it's been a very good experience for us and uh, I think this is the trend we're seeing with these different platforms. We've had experience with uh, a variety of different optobiometers from a variety of different companies. Uh, you know, I think optobiometers come a long way. They're all, I think, have a lot of uh, benefits compared to, for example, ultrasound A-scan. Uh, we have found our measurements to be consistent. Uh, we, have, we, we, we did a large series of patients where we compared, for example, uh, the Aladdin uh, to the Allo Master 700. We found that the um, measurements were very consistent. The ability to get through cataracts was, were, were quite similar. Uh, and so we feel confident that we're able to get good axial length. The keratometry again, quite accurate, and the benefit of having topography on top of it again gives us added confidence, you know, for, for example, for looking at the axis, uh, looking at the magnitude of keratometry for toric lenses. Uh, I'm one, for example, typically like, liking to use my uh, magnitude and my actual uh, absolute numbers on keratometry uh, and look at the axis uh, on topography uh, combined together to, to allow me to give me the best position for the lens and the best torque eye wall to apply to using again the latest Barrett generation uh, formula. So uh, you know for me it, it's kind of an all-in-one. It does everything that I need it to do as far as uh, a machine, as far as uh, ability to calculate IOLs. Not only for premium lenses quite frankly but for all patients who uh, are going to cataract surgery.